I recently faced the second best team in Mexico, and this game was not smooth sailing. I was dealing with bad command, the umpire didn't give me any calls, and I made a really costly error that got me in all sorts of trouble. Let's break it down. Now this game was against the Leones de Yucatan, and their stadium is being renovated, so that means they're playing in a local stadium, and the facilities weren't the best. How do you compare this with Dodger Stadium? Dodger Stadium? <laughs> uh, clubhouse, about the same size. Okay. Oh my God. This is probably the worst professional field I've played at. Yeah. Yeah. But it's cool. I like yeah. it. Show up to the field with your friends, yeah. play a baseball game, yeah. see who's better. It's like Sandlot. It's crazy what just rosin will do. Like just rosin and sweat. Nothing else. Huh? Yeah, it's nothing else. Just rosin and sweat. It's crazy. Now this game took place at sea level and it was very hot and humid. The ball was moving way more than it does in Mexico City, so I had a little trouble getting calibrated in the bullpen. So when I'm warming up and I realize I have bad command, the key for the game is to get ahead in the count. Now I'm not going to be hitting my spots perfectly, so I asked my catcher to set the glove right in the middle of the zone. That way if I miss a little bit, I'm still working ahead in the count. Baby, yep. fun. Let's do it. Hey, Rabbit, if you want to repeat the beat, just tell me like that. Yep. And you want to run again. Okay. Yeah, if, I... if you stay with me, oh, no, I switch it. You got it. Yep. Okay, well, command's going to be a little tricky tonight. Stuff's good. Just got to get strike one. That's the key to tonight's game. If I can throw a strike one in the zone, I'll be okay. But if I struggle with that, I'd be a struggle. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. So the first hitter I'm facing is Otosaka, and he actually played for the Bay Stars a couple years ago. We were never teammates because he left the team before I got there, but still kind of a cool connection. All right, well, no time to stare at the back of the mound because I got 11 seconds, so I don't want a pitch clock violation. First pitch strike, let's go. Oh, yeah, Japanese hitter here. A little slap guy. Now, this is the loudest professional stadium I've ever played in. The speakers were crazy. That's one thing that Mexico does not skimp on, the speakers. Every stadium is super loud, but this one was something extra. It got so loud at points that I couldn't even hear the pitch comm in my hat turned all the way up. Oh, he's got a leg kick too, so we can go timing. Fastball in here. So when facing Japanese hitters, their swing planes tend to be a lot flatter. So they're gonna hit high fastballs a lot better, but they're gonna struggle with splits and curveballs. So that's one of the adjustments I had to make last year in Japan. Also, Otosaka has a little bit of a hang leg kick where he kind of brings his front leg up, hangs in the air, and then tries to slap the ball. So that makes him a perfect candidate for some of the timing disruptions, the quick pitch, the slide step, stuff like that. Take that, take that three pitch out. Dude, this environment's loud, this is tight. We've got bands and drums and music. Foul ball. Okay, so you're swinging early. Early on a fastball down and in. Oh, is that firewood? That's our first firewood of the day. And fun fact for you, people who wear the firewood shirt from trevorbauer.com generate more broken bats. So if you wanna generate more broken bats, scan the QR code, click the link in the description, or go to trevorbauer.com and get yours today. Let's see, firewood. Do we go splitter away here and then curveball down? I think that's what we're doing. This mound's actually pretty nice. Hard down. Yep, not the best spot. Little top shelf splitter. Yeah, on the plate. Tip of the plate, he swings. See ya! Can I help you? Nope, just looking. Now, even though he took that pitch for strike three, I missed my spot and it was a hittable pitch. It was protected a little bit by the split before because the split started off above the zone and broke to the top part of the zone. The curveball then started off above that, so he read ball and then it broke down into the zone. But it still wasn't where I was trying to throw the pitch. But that's, uh, we gotta get the curveball down. I missed with that. I'm not gonna get mad like last game, but that can't happen all night. We gotta get the ball down. And if you wanna know what I'm referring to about being mad last game, check out this video right here when you're done watching this one. Okay, so next up is Jose Peraza, former big leaguer, and he put up good at bats all night. Oh, good swing. Middle, middle cutter. All right, we got a little quick pitch forcing nothing in here. 
Now he didn't hit that ball hard, but it was still a hit on a fastball up and in, so I need to remember that from exit bat. Jam shot, dribbler up the middle for the first hit. It's unfortunate. Now, before that bat, I didn't really know who was at the plate, but I wanted to catalog in my head so I knew who got the hit and what pitches I'd thrown in. So when I looked up and saw Jose Peraza, I was like, oh yeah, I know that name. I remember you. Jose Peraza, okay. Nope, not curveball. Yeah, I'll take the top of the zone, thank you. Ball's probably up a little bit. So the first borderline call tonight goes my way, and I think that was the last one I got all night. Maybe he was trying to make up for missing that call the rest of the night, but he missed a lot of pitches. Oh, well, we wanted to. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, 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 yes, yes. Fuck, fastball up and in. Get it there. Fucking jam. Another broken bat, maybe? Yeah, that's two firewoods. See what I mean? I wear the firewood shirt all the time, and I've already got two broken bats in one inning. That could be you. Another opportunity to get the curve ball on the ground. It's on the ground, he swings. Bury the ball. We're just gonna be aggressive, look at the tip of the plate, throw the ball in the dirt. Another missed spot and a blatantly missed strikeout call by the umpire. That's number one tonight. I don't know what he was looking at. That couldn't have been more of a strike. Down. Get the ball down. Yes, yeah, sword! Ah! Okay, well, all was right with the world. I got my sword, I got my strikeout, and I got the curveball closer to where I wanted it. I wanted it to bounce on the plate, but at least this one was below the zone and not in the zone. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Dude, that pitch before that was in the outer third. Where the Literally fuck was the, the like, In the middle, on the outer third, bro. I, I don't, like, where's the curveball? He, he missed one up. Yeah. Zip, I mean. But I mean, that was. That one is straight, 100%. No, I, that, I don't know, I don't know what else I can do. <laughs> yeah. I was like directly in the middle of the strike zone. Good. All good. So the boys put up some runs in the top of the second inning and their pitcher was taking forever. Dude, this guy's pace of play sucks. Pace of play sucks. So slow. So I was sitting for a long time. Fortunately, it was hot and humid, so I stayed pretty loose this time. Every every 60 seconds, one pitch. Good inning, good inning. Good inning. Okay, my goal for the second inning is to get you guys to buy merch at trevorbauer.com. We got firewood merch. We got sword merch. Scientifically proven, if you're wearing a sword shirt, you generate more swords. If you're wearing a firewood shirt, you generate more broken bats. Get your merch at TrevorBauer.com. Now, first hitter of the second inning is Luis Juarez, and I didn't know anything about him going into the game, so I figured I'd throw him a first pitch fastball in the zone and see where he's at. That's a weak fly ball. First pitch hacking, though. I like it. One pitch outs, extend the pitch count, try to go complete game. Would that get you guys to buy merch? If I go complete game today and strike out double digits, will you buy merch at TrevorBauer.com? I think that's a fair deal, right? So while I'm doing my merch read, I'm still cataloging information about Juarez in my head. He swung first pitch, and he actually got the barrel to the ball down and away pretty well. So I'm going to remember that for the second at bat. Next up is Macias. Yep. Now we go cutter, then slider. Okay, we'll take that. I like it. Three pitches. So three pitches, two outs is sitting, and I'm doing a really good job so far this game of getting ahead in the count and forcing the action. That was a really well-placed cutter. Good sequence. Oh, this guy wants to strike out. I can see it. He wants to be a sword. Down. Oh. So yes, that pitch was borderline, but it was touching the edge of the zone. That should have been a strike. I should be ahead in the count. Unfortunately, it's 1-0. The ball really took off left. Not a lot of movement. That one didn't take off left. That's odd. So it's 1-1. After two cutters, I decided to go with a slower slider for a strike with the idea of throwing a slider out of the zone 1-2 for the strikeout. Hey, there we go. I should have seen you were sitting slow. I feel like that should have been a fastball, but we'll take it. Six pitches. Coming to swing, huh? Yeah, I know. I like it. Go complete game. Fuck it. Why not? Bullpen can use a day off. Hey, did that convince you guys to buy merch at Trevor Bauer.com? Nice meeting you. good? Yeah, yeah, we good. We just keep throwing strikes. Yeah, They're going to be yeah. out. Fuck it. Six, they know you. They six know you pitches. Attack. Yeah. Yeah. Now, going into this game, I didn't know a lot about their hitters, so the goal for the first time through the order was to get ahead in the count, get some information on their swings, and catalog that for the second, third, and fourth time through the lineup. Connor, what do we got on Velo that inning? I thought 
a two and a four. I wanted to get a sense of where my velocity was at. I hadn't thrown anything hard yet, so I wanted to see what level I was cruising at. Did I even throw two fastballs? That's important to know because when my fastball is 92, it plays a lot different than when it's 95, and it plays a lot different than when it's 98. I don't think I even threw, did I throw two fastballs? Was one of those a cutter? So I need to know generally where I'm at, and that way I can try to pick up the fastball velocity if I need to, or I can be like, okay, the ball's coming out well tonight. So it's important to know where my fastball velocity is and where the different pitches are sitting in the velocity range. So two fastballs, two cutters, and a curveball, right? No curveballs. Okay, thanks. I threw, I threw six, was, I threw six pitches, so. What was the fly out to left? The last one? Slider. That was a slider? How hard was it? I couldn't see it. Yeah. Okay. Time for the third inning. Okay. Strike one. Dot. So a well-executed cutter puts his head a one. Love that pitch. Go again. Now when this guy stepped in the box for the first pitch, I saw that he had his hand up asking for time from the umpire. So that tipped me off that he didn't really like timing disruptions. He wanted to make sure he was set before the pitch. So I decided to try to mix some of those in. Okay, now you're just getting a quick pitch. After two cutters down and away to get to 0-2, I figured if I threw in the same look, but it was a slider that broke more, he'd have to swing at it because it looks like the cutters and then it would break off the plate and be slower and we'd get the strikeout. So I'm trying to throw this slider down and away off the plate below the zone. Okay, now you've seen two. There's no way you lay off the slider down. It's gotta be down in the zone though. Chasing out there, down. I missed my spot with the slider, but I read his body language. He was leaning out towards the outer part of the plate, he was on his toes, and he didn't swing at a pitch, it was very close. The pitch had to have started on the inner portion of the plate and broken off the plate away, and the only way you take that pitch in an 0-2 count is if you're slowed down looking for off-speed, waiting for the ball to break. So after three pitches breaking away from him, two cutters and a slider, I figured if I threw him a pitch that started outside, he would read it as nowhere close to the zone, and if it was a comeback two seam, he would take it for strike three. If you're slowed down, you're taking this pitch for sure. Mess, god damn it. Now, my two seam doesn't break at all at altitude, so I haven't thrown it hardly at all this year. So I missed with the first one pretty bad. I just yanked it down in the way instead of throwing it just like a fastball. The key on the two seam for me is to get my hand out in front as much as possible. That sets the right axis, but sometimes I pull off it a little bit early and just yank it, and then it just doesn't do anything. So that's what happened there. So after showing him that I would throw a fastball, I decided to go back to the slider, but I wanted it for a strike. Ah. Bitch. That ball is fucking disgusting. Ugh. That was gross. Okay. So next up is Ruben Tejada, and you may remember him from this play with Chase Adley. Got off on a great secondary lead, and he gets right there to break up the double play. It's really good to see that he's recovered and he's still playing. Cutter. Dot. Cutter again, down. Swing, check, something. Where's the pitch? Okay, so that's a perfectly placed cutter, and we don't get the strike again. So my thought here is after two cutters moving away from him, if I stick a fastball down and away, he probably is gonna take that. And then I have a perfect tunnel set up to try to throw a split that starts down the way and breaks the opposite way of the cutter below the zone. And I think I can get a strike out on that. I'm set here to get you on a split here. That's what I want. Fastball away, split on the plate, you swing. Now my split doesn't move a lot at altitude, so when I'm at sea level, I try to use it a little bit more just to even out the numbers, to show on the scouting report that I will throw splits. That way, hitters have to think about it every time they come to the plate, regardless of where we're playing. No. 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 And because I don't throw splits a lot no. to righties, we had a little bit of trouble getting on the same page, and I ended up getting a time clock violation warning. I think that's what the rule is. I think you get one of those, and then you get an automatic ball. I still don't know what the rule is. Aggressive, blow the zone. Let's go. Yep. A little short. Unfortunately, I bounced a little bit too far in front of the plate, so I didn't get my strike out. Now that it's 2-2, we need to throw a strike. Do I go again? 2-2? No, we gotta go slider in the zone. I don't want to throw a ball here and risk going 3-2 because then I have a chance of walking someone. So when I get to 2-2 two -two counts, it's like, okay, throw the ball in the zone, force the action here. That way, if I miss just a little bit, I still have a backup pitch. Strike. Ah. 
I'll take it. So it wasn't the best located slider, but again, the goal was to throw it in the zone and force the action, which we did, and it got a pop-up. So that's three outs. Or that's actually two outs. Clearly I was not paying attention enough to what was going on in the game. I like to think that that's because I'm so locked in on the hitter that nothing else matters. Bye right, guys. So I gotta get one more out to get out of this inning, and we're back to the top of the lineup, Otosaka. Now the first at bat, he saw two fastballs and a cutter, hit a little lazy line drive to center field, so let's mix in some off-speed stuff. Okay. Late. Now at this point in the game, I've done a really good job of getting ahead in the count. I've thrown a lot of first pitch strikes, and we're chopping through the lineup pretty easily. Flat swing, so we're gonna bang you with curveballs and split. So we'll go split here, curveball for the finish. Ah. Yep. That Japanese swing doesn't handle depth. Now we go curveball. So after that 0-1 split, I could easily have gone back to that because he was nowhere close to hitting it. I cataloged that in my head for later in the game, but I wanted to throw a curveball below the zone here because I've thrown that high fastball, I've thrown the split that looks like the high fastball and breaks, and I've gotten two swings on it. So now I want to throw a third movement and a pitch that just cannot be put in play, and that's the bounce curveball, all out of the same tunnel. Wait. And I executed the curveball perfectly and got a sword. Three pitch strikeout. Now, I don't think Otosaka was too happy about this, as you'll see later in the game. I know that Japanese swing. I learned that one last year. Note gusta splitter y curveball. Sorry, guys, I'll pay attention. My bad. Three outs here. Three outs. Three outs, not two. My bad. Hey, how about that? I've bounced two curveballs. I worked on that in the pen, and I've executed tonight. Both strikeouts. Shocker. We just, gotta, we just gotta work on uh, you knowing how many outs there are. Dude, we got all these new Twice. rules. We got all these new rules in baseball, you know? Automatic balls and pitch clock and shit. I thought we played two instead of three now. Okay, jokes aside, time for the fourth inning. Okay, first pitch strikes. Swung first time. No, he took. God damn it. Throw the ball. So that first pitch was nowhere close to the zone. We gotta throw a strike here, 1 0. So he's now shown bunt on the first two pitches of his bat. I still don't think he's actually trying to bunt. I think he's just doing it for like a little disruption to my timing, but still gotta throw a ball in the zone here. So he got his 2 0 fastball, which is probably what he was looking for. I threw it in a pretty good location though, and he fouled it off. So we're 2 1. I read him as being late on that swing, so I decided to go fastball in. I'm just gonna do that again. So we're going in. Down the middle. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Trevor. And he went right back to bunting, which really caught me off guard, and I made a terrible play. So that's two bunt attempts that I've had on the year. Two errors, this is a problem. A zero fielding percentage is ugly. Now I haven't had spring training in a long time, so I haven't practiced PFPs, but we're definitely gonna have to practice that before my next start. Hi dad. That's despicable. Now we're just gonna punch out the side. Lead off man on second base, heart of the order coming up. Former big leaguer Jose Peraza at the plate. This is not looking good. 0 for two on first pitch strikes this inning. Not a recipe for success. Get ahead, fuck. Now I'm getting taken advantage of a little bit here. An error on a basic bunt play, and then I wasn't paying attention to altering my timings or making sure the guy at second stayed close, and he stole third pretty easily. Not a good look so far for me this inning. That's fine, you can have third. Wind up, wind up. So that's one rule I do know. I actually learned that in my first start with the Diablos against the Yankees, so you can check that video out right here. But the umpire told me that if there's a guy on third and you want to go in the windup, you have to tell them. Otherwise, it's a balk and the run will score. So I made sure to tell them I was going from the windup. Now, unfortunately, we're behind 2-0, even though both of the pitches are touching the strike zone. So according to the TV strike zone anyway, it could easily be 0-2, which would drastically have changed this at bat. 
I remember I mentioned earlier that the stadium was super loud, the loudest stadium I've ever played in. Well, here's where it started getting crazy. I couldn't even hear the pitch comm, so that was a struggle the rest of this inning. The speakers were going crazy, the fans were going crazy. It was so loud. Okay, get in the zone. Okay, four pitch walk. Not good. Now we're in real trouble. Can't go out of the windup anymore because we got a guy on first and he would just steal second, so we're back to the stretch. So the four hole hitter Alonzo's up and I decided to lead with the curveball because he didn't see the curveball the first at bat. He took one for a strike that the umpire called the ball and the next one was below the zone and he sorted himself for a strikeout. So I was reading that he didn't see that pitch very well. So I led with the curveball. Strike one. Yeah. We should go that again. Now with runners on the bases and no outs, I figured he would be aggressive, so after the first pitch curveball, I tried to throw the curveball in the dirt to see if he would swing. He didn't, he held up, but I'm trying to read his swing a little bit here and see where he's at. What is he trying to do in the box so I can counteract it? So 1-1 one, one, I decided to come back with a split. Now this pitch was hittable, it had really good movement on it, but it was in the zone. So he fouls it off, luckily he didn't put it in play here because it would have been a run, but now that we're 1-2, I'm very confident that we can get this strikeout. We got ourselves in one big mess here. 1-2, you've seen two curveballs and a split. I think I gotta go curveball here and finish the freeze fastball down away if I don't get the swing. Get it down. Unfortunately, my command was pretty trash this inning, so I didn't get anywhere close to my spot. Now I have to throw a strike because I don't want to walk him to load the bases with no outs. Okay, force him down away. Get it there. So the thought on this 2-2 pitch is to stick a four-seam fastball down and away. He's seen a lot of stuff starting up in the zone, breaking down. All three curveballs have started up, and the split started at the top of the zone and then broke down into the zone, so he hasn't seen anything down. So I think if I get this fastball down and away, it's safe for two reasons. One, he's seen four off-speed pitches, so his timing's got to be slow. Two, he hasn't seen that location or that trajectory yet, so I'm pretty sure I can get the freeze fastball for a strikeout. <laughs> And now more struggles with the pitch comm. I literally can't hear it at all with how loud the stadium is. Give time. Yeah. So we had to go to giving traditional signs. Ah! Doors! Fuck yeah, let's go. One more. You get a huge strike out there. So now I have multiple ways of getting out of this inning. I can strike out a couple more people or I can get a double play here and no runs will score. So that was a big strikeout, a big pitch right there. Next up is Juarez, who swung first pitch in his first at bat on a fastball down and away and hit a decent line drive out to left field. Who's our next victim, all righty? You're fucked, fucked, my dude. You swung first pitch, so rip sliders here. Foul? Okay. You're slow, so what does that tell us? Out in front of the slider away. So I decided to start him off with the slider. I threw it right in the middle of the zone and he got the barrel to it pretty well. Fortunately for me, he pulled it foul. You're definitely looking off speed. So normally I don't throw curveballs to righties, but after the first pitch slider in the zone, I decided to throw him a curveball. I was hoping for a ground ball to third base here. The slider curveball combo is kind of a weird one. I don't throw it too often, but it seems to produce a lot of ground balls. I don't know why exactly. I'm assuming it's because they see a trajectory like this and the ball break away. So next time they see that trajectory, they start to swing at a ball that's going to be over here, but it ends up down and then just end up chopping into the ground. That's my best guess but it seems to produce ground balls. So I figured I'd take a shot at a double play here, which is something I usually don't do. Usually I go for strikeouts, but here I thought double play, get out of this inning, save some pitches, that'd be nice. We go fastball up here, slider off, two pulled fastballs. I'm just gassing him. We're gassing you down and away. Throwing us a hundred.
Fuck yeah! Now, I didn't get that fastball anywhere close to where I wanted it. It was supposed to be a freeze down and away, and it ended up middle-middle. Fortunately, the velocity beat him a little bit, got to the handle, and he hit a weak little pop-up. Two outs, one more, and we're out of this thing. Uno mas. I'm Oconio, let's go. You're on slider, so we're going first pitch heater. We're ahead now, you're getting slided, bitch. Come on, let's go. Let's fucking get this guy. Two pitches right in the middle of the zone. I needed to make sure that this O2 pitch was not hittable. So I decided to go slider down and away, and I needed to throw a good one. Okay, now you're taking fastball down and away. And that slider came right out of the fastball middle tunnel and broke away, and I was very shocked that he didn't swing at it. I think the reason he didn't swing at it, though, is because he was probably looking for slider. So I'm assuming he's looking for slider in one, two, so I'm gonna go with the fastball down and away and try to freeze him. I executed it perfectly, I just didn't get the freeze. I'm surprised that he swung at it, but it was a good job by him fouling that pitch off. Now though, I can go right back to off-speed stuff and he's gonna have to swing at it. At this point in the game though, I've realized that they're looking for my slider, so I decided to go with a different shape. It's time for the curveball. Bang a curveball on the plate. And I threw a nasty one. Perfectly placed below the zone, and he was nowhere close to it. Got the strikeout to get out of that jam that I put myself in by making a terrible error. And I was fired up. Bad baby. Boy, boy. My bad, guys. My bad. Oh boy. My bad. My bad. I'll, I'll practice bunts. My bad. Oh, <laughs> SP, did you see my velo there? Fucking soft. You told me something different. I, I was talking to the skipper and Charlie about this. They're running on you, but I know the focus that you have on the, yeah. on the hitting. Not to let that motherfuckers yeah. go. You know? I, didn't, I didn't care. Yeah. Like, I was just going to get these guys. That, that was the reason why I didn't mention anything to the catcher with the time. Yeah. So on the top of the fifth, the boys put up some more runs to go up 6 nothing, heading to the bottom of the fifth. After a long and intense inning in the fourth, I needed a quick inning here to get back on track. I am not loose and we gotta get ahead here. This is gonna be tough. Threw a good fastball down away to get ahead in the count, so we're back to throwing first pitch strikes, which is a great thing. Better? What a fucking play, man. Let's go. That was fucking sick. <laughs> I followed it up with a really well placed cutter down and away and my third baseman made a tremendous play. I mean look at this, give the guy some love. Two pitches, one out. Next up we got Valet who didn't seem to like the quick pitch first time through so I go with the quick pitch fastball to start the at bat. I executed it well and we're ahead 0-1, time for the slider. Rip it. Ooh, now get the ball down. And he did not look good on that swing, so I decided to go to it again. Down. Unfortunately, I didn't get that ball close enough to the zone because I probably would have gotten the swing, but look at his body language. You can see how he's on his toes, leaning out over the outside part of the plate. His weight's taking him across the plate even after he took the pitch. He's definitely looking for something slow breaking away from him. Now we're gonna throw a chase and come back. Dot. And I executed that two seam perfectly. You cannot throw a better comeback two seam than that. Wow. I mean, that was perfect. And it was a strike. I guess it just froze the hitter and the umpire both. So now, instead of having a strikeout, we're 2-2, two, two, and I need to throw a strike back to the slider. This time, though, I have to throw it in the zone and force the action. The fucking comeback two scene was a strike. I want that on my highlight reel. Not the fucking up and in curveball slider, whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, that breaking ball was no good, but again, it evens out. I'll take the strike out. Okay, get ahead. We got two outs. Gotta know the outs. Got Tejada, last guy. All right. Need to get ahead here. 
I like that ball. We got split open here. Or we got cutter or slider. Oh, right off the pole. So after the slider at the top of the zone, I decided to try the slider curveball combo again and see if I could get a strikeout. Okay, what are we going here? The slider is up. I like curveball here. Yeah, he does too. I like it. See ya! Try to throw this curveball and bounce it on the white of the plate so it looked just like the slider, but instead of breaking sideways, it goes down. Now, even though I missed my spot, that's another strike. I mean, that ball's clearly below the belt, clearly on the white of the plate. I mean, uh, frustrating. That's two free strikeouts that he's missed this inning. On the plate, Trevor. Ah, sword! So again, it balances out and I get the strikeout on the next pitch. I ended up getting a sword, so that was pretty cool. Oh yeah, don't forget, sword merch, trevorbauer.com. Get yours today. Ponyo, dude, two looking strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that comeback two seed? He missed that one, he missed Yeah. He's missed like five tonight. I know, I wanna, I wanna like, can I help you know just looking on my highlight reel? And he robbed me of two of those. Okay, to start the six, we got Otosaka. Now he's been late on fastballs, and I've gotten him on split and curveball in his second at bat. So I decided to start him off with a curveball. After the lead curveball, I tried to throw a cutter to the hands with the idea of throwing a curveball below the zone after that. Yes, 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 yes! I hate. He clearly tried to bunt this ball. I, I was so confused in the game. I, I don't know how you missed that. He clearly tried to bunt it and then pulled the bat back after trying to bunt it. That should have been a strike. Like, what are we looking at? So instead of 0-2, we're 1-1. I decided to come back with the split and we get a little bit too far down below the zone so we don't get the swing. Now, somehow, we're behind in the count, even though we should be 1-2. I just don't know what the umpires were looking at there. Fastball down the way. Oh, that's gonna be a hit. Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? And that ball was hit about two miles an hour, but somehow just found a hole. Now we got the leadoff guy on and we're back in trouble. So we take an 0-2 count and turn it into a fucking dribbler up the middle. All right, well, we gotta be careful of stealing. He will run. Now it's important to get ahead here first pitch, but unfortunately I missed by like a mile. That's an out. Are you kidding me? Now when he first hit that ball, I thought it was an out. I got the pitch exactly where I wanted to, fastball down and away. He got the barrel to it somehow though and hit this ball way better than I thought. Now we got a carbon copy of the fourth inning. Two guys on, no outs, middle of the order at the plate. Really making it hard on myself here. All right, we'll do this again. Got Jose Peraza is at the plate. Important to throw strike one here. I think he's been looking for sliders as their whole lineup has, so I decided to go with the curveball instead. And again, the stadium was so loud that I could not hear pitch comms. So we have to go back to signs. Now, this is the first time we've had to use signs with a runner on second, and we hadn't talked about what those signs would be. We hadn't talked about what sequence we were going to use, if it was going to be last sign or first sign or follow the two, or what kind of combination we were going to use. So. Catcher had to come out to the mound to get on the same page. I can't, it's, okay, it's not allowed, just go first what? sign. Yeah. Second sign. Second Six sign, four. okay. Really don't want the runner at second relaying the signs to the hitter here. And this at bat is off to a really bad start. We're down 2-0, we got guys on second and third, nobody out. This is not looking good. Sometimes in situations like this, sequencing goes out the window and you just have to challenge the hitter. You just have to say, you know what? My stuff's better than you. I'm going to throw it in the zone. Let's see who wins. So that's exactly what I did here on the 2-0 pitch. I knew he was looking for fastball. I knew it was a dangerous pitch to throw, but I needed to throw a strike and get back in the count. Fastball middle. Let's see who's better. Okay, late. When I saw that he was late on the 2-0 fastball down the middle, I decided to go fastball up and in. The thought here is maybe I blow up by him, get to 2-2. 
At worst, it's going to be a pop-up somewhere on the infield maybe, hopefully shallow outfield so no runs score. Hold it. But instead of being up and in, it was outside and he was still late on it. Now I have a really good tunnel set up for a slider or a curveball below the zone. 2-2. Two, two. Dang, a curveball? Or a slider? That slider shared the fastball tunnel for a long time, and I'm honestly surprised I didn't get more of a swing out of him. But again, I think he's looking for slider in this at bat, which would explain why he didn't budget that pitch. Now we're 3-2 though, and we gotta get this guy. We have to execute a pitch here and get an out. We do not want to walk him and be bases loaded with no one out. So after he took the 2-2 slider and didn't budge at it, I figured he was looking slow. So I threw the 3-2 fastball and he was late on it. Again, he's been late on all the fastballs this at bat. Late on fastball, but... So I thought about going back to an off-speed pitch, but decided to stick with the fastball and just move it a little bit in and see if we can get it by him. Now one of the reasons I knew I could do this is because I had checked on my velocity earlier in the game. After the fourth inning, when I asked my pitching coach how hard I was throwing, he said 97, 98. So I knew that when I got into situations like this, this is about what my fastball would be. If I didn't have that knowledge, I probably wouldn't have been as confident to throw my fastball in this situation. But knowing that it was 97, 98, that's a pretty good pitch. It's hard to hit that. So that gave me a little extra confidence to throw fastballs in the zone and try to get this guy. There we go. Okay. We got one. So here we got three hitters to strike out two. So we've been careful of this guy. Now the reason I say I have three hitters to strike out two is this. I'm trying to get out of this jam without giving up any runs. Early in the game or when I'm not in a jam, I don't like to throw pitches out of the zone once I get to a 2-2 count. I don't want to walk guys, I want to force the action, make him hit it, and if I miss a strikeout to save a walk, I'm fine with that. That's different here. The next three hitters, I'm going to try to get the strikeout using the full complement of pitches. So even in 3-2 count, I have an open base. If I try to throw a slider and I don't get a strike or a throw curveball in the dirt and I don't get the strikeout in a 3-2 count, that's fine because I can go on and get the next guy. So this opens up a lot more possibilities for me to extend the counts a little bit and be a little bit more fine with my pitches and prey on the hitter's aggressiveness a little bit instead of worrying about walking someone. So one out, next up is Alonzo. And remember, we got him with fastballs up and away last at bat in this exact same situation. So let's see where he's at this at bat. Got my fastball up and away last time. Haven't gone in. Gotta get ahead. Hey, good swing, Poppy. But you're late on that. And that gives me all the info I need. Late on two, now you're gonna chase the curveball down. Give it to me, baby. Bang it on the plate. you nope just looking so even though i didn't get that curveball on the plate it was protected by the two fastballs prior they both started on a trajectory that had the top of the zone he fouled both of them off this curveball started on a trajectory a little bit above those fastballs so he probably read ball and then it bit into the bottom part of the zone it's hard to hit a backdoor curveball as a lefty and fortunately, the umpire didn't ball me on this one like he did the first time I faced this guy. So we get our second strikeout on three pitches, and we're almost out of this thing. This guy's swung at every first pitch. What have we not thrown this guy? He's definitely swinging. So I decided to lead curveball to him, which I normally don't throw to righties, so I figured he could not be looking for this pitch, which gives me the advantage. Didn't like the curveball. Go back to it, I guess. Now remembering his second at bat of the game, which was the exact same situation as this, I threw him a curveball and he rolled it over towards third. He didn't respond well to the first pitch curveball of this at bat, so I decided to go back to it and we get a similar rollover towards third. So I'm reading this as he doesn't see the curveball nearly as well as he's been seeing the slider. Now what? Bat on the curveball there. I mean, you gotta bury one, he'll swing. Dangerous if you don't get it down. But we'll just get it down. Now the reason I feel like this is dangerous if I don't get it down is because he's seen two curveballs in the zone. If I throw a third one in the zone, it's likely that he's going to roll this ball over, but it's probably going to be a hit because he's seen the same movement and the same speed twice already. So the thought here is just to throw it on the plate and make sure to get it down. 
and it was not down it was more up i guess i got lucky here that it was above the zone because if this is in the zone and it's higher definitely a hit and two runs I mean, we have fastball up we have slider chase we still need three off speeds we could go fastball freeze down away we could go two seam here I got the exact reaction I wanted out of the two seam, a complete freeze. Unfortunately, I missed the zone by about an inch, so we didn't get the strikeout. But because he didn't budge at it, I figured I could go right back to that pitch and maybe throw it in the zone and get the strikeout anyway. The thing about freezes though is doubling up on them usually doesn't work because they just saw that trajectory and so now they're accustomed to it. So I execute this pitch better, but he fouls it off to stay alive. Good job on his part. Now you chase it. Now we got slider. But now that he's seen two fastballs and he's swung at one, I've gotten the buy-in. I've gotten his timing a little bit faster. Time to go back to the curveball, which he has not been seeing well this at bat. I just got to get it down. This has to be a ball below the zone. Curveball on the plate, on the plate. Hard. Ah! Ah! Who wants some? Who wants some? Let's fucking go! Great sequence there with that last guy. Very good. The first one, the first one went away. It's just a little down. Just a little down. That's perfect. And he didn't budge. Just yeah. So I, I was right, right on the same page with you. He's looking slow. Something slow. Eighty-seven. Well, we talked about this last start that I'm good for 110, so I got at least two more innings in me. You know you pitched on Wednesday now. What's today, Friday? Yeah. That's five days. I'm built for four. That's already one extra day's rest. No, that, that, that's our point because you're going to be here on, on Wednesday. I know, but we're here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm used to pitching here, so I already have one extra day. And your fifth day? Yeah, I'm built for every four days, not yeah. every five. Okay. We good. All right. I'm at, I'm at 10. I got to get to 12. There is someone at the hotel. He gave me some food before the game. And he said, my bet is that you get 12 strikeouts tonight. I said, I'll do it just for you. Here we go. So low, we're chilling. I got 10. And after talking my way into another inning, it was time for the seventh. Let's get those strikeouts. We gotta get ahead, get ahead, get ahead, get ahead. Focus on that. So we start the inning off with the first pitch fastball away to get ahead 0-1. Yeah, we'll go slider then back to the split. Pitch. one slider shared the exact same tunnel as the fastball, but we didn't get a budge. Again, more reinforcement that they're looking for my slider. Two seam away. So 1-1, one, one, we really need to throw a strike. Unfortunately, I threw a waste pitch, one of the few waste pitches all night. That's... So I figured he was looking for a fastball in the zone 2-1, so I decided to come back with a cutter. I missed my spot a little bit, but it's clearly a strike. Umpire balled me again. Now we're 3-1. That's a strike. Okay, get aggressive in the zone here. Three one, I execute a very good fastball down and away, perfectly placed to get to three two. And because he didn't budge at it, I decided to go right back to that. Come back to seam down and away for the strikeout. So I execute another perfect comeback two seam down and away, absolutely dot this pitch, get the exact reaction I wanted out of the hitter, which is a freeze, and the umpire balls it again. But this is clearly a strike. I mean, you can see from the side angle, it clearly catches the knee on the way in, and it's clearly over the white. That's a strike. It should have been a strikeout. Unfortunately, it's a walk to lead off the inning, and we're right back in a jam. Unfucking believable how many times do I have to dot that fucking pitch? Get ahead. Doors. So reading the OO swing, he was late on a fastball up, so I decided to stay hard and go back with the fastball. Only this time I decided to throw a two seam away earlier in the count. And my thought on that pitch is this. If I throw the two seam away and it starts off the plate and comes back to get to O2, and then I throw a slider that starts inside of that, so inside the line of the two seam, looking like a strike inside the strike zone, 
and it breaks off the plate, he's more likely to swing at that because he's already seen something that looked more like a ball that ended up as a strike. So this is what I like to call crossing the outside corner. So start something as a ball that comes back for a strike, start something for a strike that ends up breaking off for a ball. That's the thought here. Now this is one technique I use as an adjustment when lineups start looking for my slider. I kind of flip the order in which I do things. If they're looking for sliders off, then I like to freeze with two seams coming back. And then if I want to get them to swing at the slider again, I start throwing the two seams earlier in the count so that they have to read that as a strike, then I can get them with the sliders at the end. Finally get a strike on that. Now slider. Here though, I decided to go with a curveball. I'd had good success all night with curveballs to righties, probably because they're looking for the sweeping motion of the slider and not the depth of the curveball. So I decided to go right back to that 0-2. Curveball on the plate, yeah. Yes! So I throw a good curveball. I get my sword, I get my strike out. The ball did kick away from my catcher. So the runner advanced to second. But in my head, I thought the guy at the plate also advanced to first. So I think it's zero outs, man on first and second, when in reality, it's man on second with one out. So that should be two strikeouts this inning. So here, I'm checking with my infielders about who to throw the ball to on a double play. But there's no double play option available. I didn't even know that until like two outs later. So next up is Valet, and I decided to lead with a slider. So I decided to go slider first pitch. I missed my spot a little bit, but it was a strike, so we're ahead 0-1. Doors. So 0-1, I decided to go with the two seam away, and this is again what I was talking about, trying to throw the two seam early in the count to force him to swing at the slider late in the count. Fuck you! So here, instead of going with the curveball, I decided to go with the slider, and I'm trying to throw this ball down and away as a ball off the plate. Now, I missed my location by a lot right there. Fortunately for me, we got the freeze, and it's a strikeout. So here, I'm again checking with my infielders, who do I throw the ball to for a double play? But there's no one on first, and there's two outs. And this is when I realize what had happened. Two outs. Now we got Ruben Tejada for his third at bat of the night. Decided to start him off with a fastball and challenge him, make sure I get ahead and take control of this at bat. Aggressive down and away. So 0 1, I decided to go with the slider, tried to throw it down and away, but my slider command was terrible, so I missed my spot by a lot. Even though I missed, this is still a strike. This should be 0 2, but we don't get the call. So 1-1, one, one, I decided to go back to the slider and try to get it down and away, which is where I was trying to throw the 0-1 pitch. And I miss yet again, nowhere close to where I was trying to throw it, but again, another strike. So now we've thrown three strikes this at bat and we're somehow in a 2-1 count. So here, I decided to go with the two seam away because it's been working well, and I know if I land it, then I can try to get the slider off the plate again and maybe we get a swing. I didn't get away, but it did run up and in towards his hands and I sawed him off really bad. This ball had a lot of spin on it. It hit the ground twice and bounced different directions each time. And that, combined with the runner crossing in front of my shortstop when the ball was coming, made this a really difficult play. Another ball hit at like 20 miles an hour tonight that ends up in a base runner. Just unbelievable. I just want to give you a little break. Yeah. So how do you want to attack him? Uh, I think we go first pitch curveball here. Okay. And then we can get him with that split again. Okay, yeah. Yes, the amount of pitches, that's the only thing. You got the, the commitment that you have? Yep. Okay, you already did it, okay? Yep. But one more hit and it's going to be okay for you? Yeah, okay, we'll let's do it. Here we go. So we got Otosaka for his fourth at bat of the night. I decided to lead curveball. Unfortunately, I threw a pretty lazy one that wasn't close to being a strike, so we're behind 1-0. Now, remember earlier in the game, he was kind of mad at me for sorting him. So that's going to come into play in this at bat. Thank you. 1-0, I need a strike, and I decided to go back to the curveball. We landed at the top of the zone. Unfortunately, the umpire calls this one a strike, so we're 1-1. Going 2-0 here would not have been good. So after two curveballs and the 1-1 count, I decided to go with the split. Now, last year in Japan, I learned that the curveball followed by the split combination is actually very effective against swings like this. So that was in the back of my head when I was throwing this pitch. And he did not look good at all on that one. So I just decided to go right back to it. That was an ugly swing. Let's see if we get another one. Okay. Go to that again. Ah! 
There's my K on my split that I wanted that inning. Fucking go. And one, two, I threw an even nastier one and got another bad swing for my 13th strikeout of the night. Now afterwards, he was not too happy and he was saying something to me, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. That was a hell of a pitch, Trevor. That was the nastiest split I've ever seen. So my teammate Tomohiro Anraku knows Otosaka, so I asked him the next day to find out what he was saying. Turns out he was just frustrated that he didn't get me. He was trying to be competitive, he was trying to get hit off me. He got a little bit mad that I gave him the sword in his second at bat, so he really wanted to get me back, but I got him. So that's all that was. Nasty splits, oh my god. Come on, baby, oh boy. Hey, you gonna be dark. Yep. That's you. Don't worry, baby. My bad. I got you. You Good make guy. plenty of plays back there for me. You save my ass all the time. Oh. Hey, that's what you got? Huh? That's what you got? Yeah, well, they're taking me out. I'm hey. fine. Did I look tired? Three strikeouts at anything. You good? Oh, wait. Nine one. Hey, that's how you're supposed to be. That was... Yeah, I know. Uh, that's you. Yeah. This is how it's supposed to be. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> Many strikeouts. Yeah. I feel a complete game. I'm trying to get the bullpen a day off, but. Yeah, well, you didn't give your two guys. They shouldn't be at least. The fuck? Ten beaches left. You got one more. You know, you got 15. I got what? 13. Also, send me, send me for another inning. I can get 15 and break the franchise. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't they, they, you, you told me the wrong thing. <laughs> Don't they low? How many pitches? Well, no seven. Oh, I averaged one like 11 last year in Japan. I'm good. No. That's enough. All right. We got to you. <laughs> Whatever. If the fucking umpire would have called no. oh, you know, no. features that he does. Oh, you know. Unbelievable. All right. Okay, hear me out. <laughs> uh, shit, yeah. right. I'm listening. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm at, like, like, I'm at 13. Yeah. And, and, and franchise record is 14. Um, I feel like we've had this conversation before. Yeah. I'm fine with being done, so okay, I respect good. your decision. Okay. I just wanted you to hear me out. Yeah, I, I, know, I, I know where you were. Okay. Yeah. I know where you were. So after half-heartedly trying to talk my way into another inning to break the franchise record for strikeouts, that was it for my day. Seven innings pitched, four hits, 13 strikeouts, and the team finished it off to get an 11-1 win. Another great day. Boys, that's called an ass beating right there. Well, you know.